space, the final frontier, the frontier that we will probably never reach. I don't mean the solar system, here it's a little more optimistic. I'm talking about the galactic scale. Perhaps decades ago someone thought that by now we would be flying to other stars, but so far we are not even close. Sure, there are some theoretical possibilities and we have some idea how we could, at least in principle, reach other stars. And there are drastically different ideas, from slow generation starships to warp drives. But all of those ideas have a lot of problems that we can't solve with the current level of technology. But from time to time, someone comes up with an idea of a prototype of some technology that seems revolutionary and may even promise the possibility of interstellar travel. I myself dream of humanity going to other stars, so I can understand how tempting such ideas might be. One of such ideas is the concept of the reactionless electromagnetic drive or M-drive, also known as the impossible drive. Probably you've heard something about M-drive. The concept has existed since the beginning of this century, and it seems that this concept violates fundamental laws of physics. And still, even NASA studied M-drive. So let's talk about what it is, how it's supposed to work, could we actually use it for interstellar travel, and also look at the history of experiments both for and against the idea, and, and of course, the latest data. And my name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. So, the impossible drive. Actually, it's called that, not because it's a perpetual motion machine, though there are similarities. Let's begin with the person who started the whole thing. British engineer Roger Scheuer. According to this document on his own website, he's a very experienced engineer who worked in space and defense spheres, worked for Airbus, and was involved in the development of such satellites as Skynet, NATO 1V, U Telesat TV. He invented M drive in the 90s. I have found a patent filing for the Shores microwave drive from 1998. In 2001, he founded Satellite Propulsion Research Limited, in short SPR, and this company continues to work on M drive. In short, during the last two decades, it's been going something like this. Roger Scheuer invents M drive. Scientists say it violates laws of physics and can't possibly work. Short claims that it produces thrust in experiments. Then several research groups conduct their own experiments, and some claim that M-Drive works, and some that it does not. Also, if it did work, we would kind of have to rethink our understanding of the whole universe. So what's the basic principle of M-Drive? This is what it looks like. It doesn't look really like a futuristic revolutionary device that breaks laws of physics, and it's actually pretty simple. Here it is. Just... just... wow. This is a simple diagram from the Roger Schroer article. We have two main elements. It is an asymmetrical so-called resonant cavity, which is similar in shape to a rocket nozzle, with one key difference. In the case of a regular rocket engine, propellant is exhausted through the nozzle, which makes the rocket move. But here the cavity is closed from each side, so there's basically no holes. The second element is a magnetron, which generates microwaves, just like in your microwave oven. Microwaves travel here, get reflected inside, and basically push on this plate and voila, the thrust. You might want to say, what? So what is wrong here? Again, M-Drive is not exactly a perpetual motion machine. To work, it needs some energy source. Magnetron in M-Drive obviously requires energy input to work. So the reason why it is called impossible is because it violates a different fundamental law, the law of conservation of momentum. Imagine you asked a person to help you push the car and then... But that's basically what M-Drive is supposed to do. The law of conservation of momentum is one of the most fundamental laws just like conservation of energy law. The momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body, and it is equal to mass times velocity. According to the law of conservation of momentum, the momentum is always conserved in a closed system that is not affected by any external forces. If we adapt the momentum of every single object in that system, we get a certain number. Then, after some time, even if those objects interact with each other, the total momentum of the system will remain the same. Let's look at a simple example. Say we've got two objects, each with a mass of one kilogram. They're in a vacuum and no external forces affect them. The orange one is moving with a velocity of 10 meters per second, so its momentum is 1 times 10 
equals 10 kilograms meters per second. The second object in the system is stationary. So 1 times 0 when its momentum is 0. If we add up the momentum of both bodies, we get the combined momentum of the system of 10 kilograms times meters per second. But if the first object interacts with the second one and transfers some of its momentum, the second starts moving, we measure velocities of both bodies, calculate momentum, and combined momentum is still going to be 10 kilograms times meters per second. There just cannot be more motion out of nowhere. To start moving, for instance, I need to push off the ground, or I can do this. Rocket engines work the same way by expelling the propellant. The exhaust is this way and it makes the rocket move in the opposite direction. You know, Newton's third law, action, reaction and all that. But if I were to stand in the metal box on wheels, I wouldn't be able to make it move continuously in one direction by pushing it on the wall from the inside. But that's exactly the logic behind M-Drive. The difference being is here it's photons pushing on the wall. But sure says it's not the same as pushing yourself. Okay then? But according to the SPR's website, mdrive.com, mdrive works because of the radiation pressure. The most obvious example here is solar or light sail. Photons actually can transfer momentum to a sail and that does make a spacecraft move, similar to how a regular sail works. This effect is well known and has been shown to work multiple times. For instance, Planetary Society's spacecraft LightSail 2 is demonstrating this in space right now. But the spacecraft that uses LightSail doesn't have a light source on the spacecraft itself. It is pushed, for instance, by the solar radiation. And there is a very specific shape. In short, supposedly, microwaves inside the cavity create resonance and there is more pressure on one side. Here, the force is weaker and here it is stronger. That is supposed to result in the thrust. Microwaves are supposed to stay inside. That's why it's a propellantless drive. If it actually worked, we could create flying cars without propellant, basically anti-gravity transport. And of course, it could be used for interstellar travel. According to some estimates, it could accelerate spacecraft up to over 90% of the speed of light. Actually, we could have some really weak thrust if we removed this plate so photons could escape the system. But that would be a photon drive, which is a story for another time. But when the system is closed… So it should be clear why most scientists are skeptical and why they call it the impossible drive. But there's always a but. Roger Scheuer and some other researchers claimed that they had had thrust in their experiments. So what's the deal? We were wrong in our understanding of physics, perhaps there could be some unknown effects, and maybe if it works, who cares how it works? But does it actually? It's not the first time when someone claims to have created something that is supposed to violate laws of physics. But unlike many of those, M-Drive was not immediately forgotten by everyone because some research groups continued to claim to have positive test results. Their versions of the drive supposedly had very weak but measurable thrust. First to claim to have positive test results is obviously Schreier himself. By the way, SPR was for some time even funded by the British government. So what are the problems with those statements? Well, there are a lot of them. Firstly, there was almost non-peer-reviewed studies in respectable journals. Also, there is this. Even though for a long time there were no peer-reviewed studies, Schroer claimed that his test had been validated by independent specialists of seven large companies, such as Siemens, BAE Systems, EADS Astrium. But the thing is, there is no proof to that. And that's the letter from EADS Astrium's technical director and he refutes those claims and doesn't want their company to be associated with M-Drive in any way. Seems a bit shady to me. A group of researchers from Northwestern Polytechnical University in China also claimed to have thrust in their experiments. Their articles from 2011-2012 are included in the list of materials on Shore's website and it's even in the red font, the only headline on the whole page, by the way. But in 2014, the same group conducted more experiments. The article itself is in Chinese, but at least the abstract in English, which reads significant thrust, was not detected. So they didn't manage to recreate positive results of previous tests and concluded that those results were probably due to some measurement errors. But for some reason, there is no mention of that on SPR's website, unlike the previous supposedly successful tests. 
Even though the list seems to be constantly updated, there are some recent materials. But perhaps the best known experiments were conducted in the NASA Eagle Works Laboratory. But what is this lab? It is also called Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory, APPL. It's a small lab that studies various perspective technologies, some of which are usually associated with science fiction rather than with science, using wormholes, warp drives and M-drive. One of the goals of the lab is to make interstellar travel possible. They even have a logo with the warp drive. I think it's cool that such a lab exists. You never know where the next breakthrough will happen. But just the fact that it is NASA doesn't mean everything they study should actually work. So this was the lab that published the first peer-reviewed study with positive results. Their setup included the M-Drive itself and measurement equipment like torsion pendulum, which is supposed to be precise enough to measure micro-Newton level thrust. Also measurements were conducted in vacuum, and it's claimed to produce the thrust of 1.2 million newtons per kilowatt. How weak or strong is that? Well, that is billions of times weaker than modern chemical rockets like Falcon 9. Iron drives are a little closer, though. For instance, each drive of NASA's Dawn spacecraft produced 91 million newtons of thrust. That's much closer, but remember that iron drives are so far useful only in space. That's why you still need chemical rockets to put the spacecraft in space, where iron engines are turned on and start slowly accelerate the spacecraft. It is comparable to the force of a hand holding a sheet of paper. Still in the vacuum of space, even with weak but constant acceleration, it is possible to achieve high velocities necessary for interplanetary travel. It just takes time. If modern cars can go 0 to 60 miles per hour in seconds, it took Dawn spacecraft four days. So Eagle Works claimed to have thrust, but that was not strong enough to move a sheet of paper. Authors claim that they tried to account for possible errors, but still this work was criticized. For instance, this is an article that goes through a lot of things Eagle Works might have not accounted for, so their result could be just an error. And this study, made by a team from Dresden University of Technology, also found possible explanations of Eagle Works results. It is said here that Eagle Works didn't account for the effects of electric and magnetic fields in the wiring of the setup. And Troyer and SPR might have had the same issue. Dresden team concluded that the protection from the electromagnetic fields eliminates the thrust. Perhaps Eagle Drive studies made a significant impact on making a concept of M-Drive that popular. But not the most accurate measurements, very weak supposed thrust on the verge of the statistical significance, lack of reproducible test results are not the only problems of M-Drive. Even if we suppose that there is actually thrust, nobody really has a good theoretical explanation for how it's supposed to work, which is kind of a big problem in the scientific process. Actually, there are some attempts to explain how it could work, but all of them are inconsistent with one another. And I won't go into detail here, I'll just name them. Eagle Works used the idea of pilot wave theory, a special interpretation of quantum mechanics. A different study uses Unruh effect to explain the thrust. It's a hypothetical effect and it's not even clear if it actually exists. There is an idea that inside the cavity pairs of photons are created and some photons can escape the cavity which creates the thrust and momentum conservation is not violated. In short, explanations don't agree with each other and some of the used effects may not even exist. But as I said, if it actually works, who cares how? Now it's time to talk about the most recent studies that came out a few months ago. The same team from the Dresden University of Technology that already checked Eagle Works tests had three more new studies. The idea is that some elements in the setup generate magnetic and electric fields and some parts also can warm up. That can slightly deform some elements of the system and when the supposed thrust is so weak, this deformation can be seen as thrust. This is why the more precise the equipment, the better. And that's what the team from Dresden University of Technology did. Also, they managed to recreate the so-called positive result. They designed a system with an inverted counterbalance double pendulum which eliminates most of heating effects. Also, setup was powered with a battery to minimize the electrical effects of wiring. It allowed Dresden team to increase measurement accuracy by three orders of magnitude. And M-Drive showed no thrust. So they concluded that previous results were false positives. 
This study is usually referred to as the final nail in the coffin of M-Drive. Roger Schroer, though, disagrees. He claimed that in those tests the shape of the cavity was wrong and all that, but still most of the scientific community is on Dresden team's side. According to Schroer's older plan, by now there already should be working prototypes of M-Drive in space. But there was some information that China was going to test something in space, but that's not clear. There were some rumors that NASA were planning some tests on board of the mysterious Boeing X-37 plane, but it turned out to be a different type of the electric drive and not the impossible one. I haven't mentioned that there were several generations of M-Drive and some other similar projects, but everything is more or less the same here. So during 20 years of that story, some people might have had some reasons for optimism, but now there aren't many. Or any. Anyway, the story is interesting how much time, effort and money was spent on a project that was basically doomed to fail. At least we improved our testing methods along the way. I completely understand the desire to create a revolutionary technology that would allow flying cars and interstellar travel. And we also have to remember that some ideas that seemed crazy at first turned out to be true. So it's not right not to try at all. But I don't know what the actual reasoning of the inventor was here. One thing is for certain, laws of physics still hold up and there was no revolution in science. At least for now. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye!